Hi, Mom. Yeah. No, can you pick up Chris after school? Yeah, I'm at, I'm at the doctor's. Mrs. Harris? Describe your symptoms. H hang on. Stress, headaches, nausea. Well, I work on Saturdays. And how long has this been? Equanimity. Balance your lifestyle. Hey, this is the Valder Beebe Show, broadcasting live in Dallas, Texas, on KKVI FM Radio. Who am I speaking with? This is Stephen Dynan. Hi, Valder. Hi, Stephen. How are you? I'm great. How about yourself? I'm having a wonderful life. Thank you for joining us. We're so excited you get to talk to my audience. We want to know what you know that we need to know. <laughs> Uh, well, I've written a book called Sacred America, Sacred World, which is really the excuse to be on the show here. And it, I think it's important at this time of bitter partisanship, a lot of divides, you know, black and white, uh, rich and poor. We're, we're, we're getting more torn apart as Americans than we've almost ever been before. And it's important for us to remember the sacred principles on which we were founded, which are really more universal principles and point us towards greater wholeness and unity, really. E pluribus unum means out of many, one. And that oneness is something we're forgetting right now. And comes both from recognizing our roots, comes from training and working across the partisan divides and class divides and race divides, but also comes from having a, having a mission that we share together to, to you know, create a template of what's possible for America and ultimately the world. How are you and all of the other people who want this unity, how are you going to do it? Will the book play an important part in that? You know, I, I'm really proud of the book, Sacred America, Sacred World, because, partially because it's gotten endorsements from both left and right. And it's unusual to do that in a political season. You know, I reached out, Rich Toffel of the Log Cabin Republicans came on board, Michael Osterlink of the, of the Liberty Coalition. Next week I'm going to, uh, going to Cleveland to be part of uh, some things associated with the Republican National Convention. There's a purple tent to be speaking with Grover Norquist. And that's in the context, I'm, I'm normally a very progressive Democrat. And so what I've tried to do in the book is to, is to articulate the principles that really bring us together and to show that there are a lot of solutions that do bridge the divides, that bring together the best of capitalism and the best of social justice, and that show, show how we can actually create solutions that uplift more Americans or that, that help our, educate our, our, our families, or educate our children better and help strengthen our families. There's a lot of common ground that, we, that goes missing when we're just focused on the partisan warfare and who's going to win. I was wondering, when you try to teach about being an American, loving an American, following the rules of America. We're currently teaching on theory, and a lot of people have never read the text, so they don't understand the text. So how can you teach on theory? Well, I think that it's, it's important, uh, first of all, to, we can do the inner work, too. I think doing the, doing the historical reading is important, but also just to recognize in ourselves, where have we gotten disenchanted? Where have we gotten cynical about politics? Where are we disrespecting political leaders, for instance? All those things can actually undermine our, our deeper relationship with the country, which I think is a love relationship, and it's, a, it's built on respect and honor and ultimately kind of reverence that sacred implies. So when we have that kind of relationship, we, we're helping the country to grow because we're invested in it. Just like we're invested in our family, we're investing in our citizenship and helping us uh, really put a, a good chunk of our energy to making our culture healthy and whole, which doesn't just, it isn't just about left and right. It's really about bringing people together on a higher level. It is. But let me back up because maybe you didn't understand my question or I didn't articulate it very well. When I grew up in the 50s, I'm a baby boomer. You know, we said the Pledge of Allegiance, we learned America the Beautiful, uh, we took civics, we took uh, American history. So I had an ingrained understanding of the United States of America. Most of that doesn't exist, so people don't understand. So once again, when you only want to, when you only have theory to work on, how do you get people to understand? Well, I think it, there's... There's obviously having some good exposure to the historical roots and the documents, and, 
and also just really taking the time to 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 read about read about who we are and what we're doing and 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 to to invest in that. And I, I like to read articles from left and right, for instance, on on news sites because I find that it helps gives a broader perspective of the values and priorities of the American people. So it really there's there's some is like recognizing the roots, and then some is committing to to really working together to create something better. I know I hate to I hate being my job someday, and I'm going to hate it today after talking to you. But when you have people watching. Um, uh, the Kardashians and 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 uh, what is that? Love and hip hop. They're not reading what you and I are reading. Right. Well, that's part of part of taking our duty as citizens seriously. I have a chapter in the book on sacred citizenship to really see it as part of our part of our our deepest duty as as human beings in this country to to take the citizenship seriously and to be a leader in our own way. And that leader can be mean just what what we're reading, what we're exposed to, but also uh, taking the time to make a difference in our communities and get involved and, and work with our elected officials. Yeah, yes, there's a lot of distracting things. You know, Kardashians, maybe a lot of eye, you know, eye candy and excitement to watch it, but it's, there's something deeper that we're here for. And, and I'm calling with this book and to really for us to remember that and to commit to that and to, and to manifest it together. Okay. At the end of the day, we talked about the Kardashians and love and hip hop. Those people take their money with them, and that's how they feel about most leaders in America. At the end of the day, people call them politicians. They take their money with them. How do we help people have a part of the American dream or stay a part of the American dream? Well, I, I think that it's again, it, it comes back to really being invested in this, in a commitment to be citizens together and to be Americans. And, and, if, and when people are disenchanted or disillusioned and they pull away from the process, then it's easier to just focus on yourself and, and, and what, what makes your life richer or better. But there, there is, we're actually, good research shows that we're actually happier and healthier when we do commit to serve and we give back. So it's not, ultimately when we're just selfish, it doesn't even make us happier. So there, there's a level of generosity and civic engagement that actually makes us into better human beings and happier as well. And the more we can understand that and get the word out about that, the more, the more of us engage in really um, making this democracy what it promises to be. Steve, I could spend all day talking to you. I'm halfway through your book. I like your book. I like what your book is trying to do. So I wish you Godspeed on that. And I hope America becomes the place that people dream of in their hearts. Thank you for being my guest. Where can we go online and find out more about you and the book? You can find it at Amazon.com or SacredAmerica.net. A lot of details there and some bonus prizes when people, sign, when people buy now. Well, I'll be looking for you at the GOP convention. Maybe they'll let you be a key speaker. How about that? <laughs> Probably not from the big stage. I'm speaking at the Purple Tent, which is, is really all about like finding our common ground. I'll be speaking, speaking there with uh, other, other leaders who are interested in going beyond our, our partisan divides. Oh, is that like the little table at Thanksgiving? You know, <laughs> it's a big table. That's one way to look at it. That's funny, Valder. Thank you, Steve. All right. Thank you so much.